My name's Matthew Pottage and I'm the curator of Wisley and I'm standing here in the Wall Garden West on what is an absolutely freezing cold but beautiful winter's day. And it's a very exciting day at Wisley. We're welcoming Mary Berry, one of our RHS ambassadors, to have a winter walk around the garden and see some of the winter highlights. And of course, people sometimes think a garden is completely asleep in the winter and, you know, December, January, February, they're not times to visit a garden but there's always so much to see and it's a lovely time of year to appreciate the bones and the structure of a garden. So join us for a few winter highlights. Mary, it's so brilliant to be able to welcome you to Wisley today uh, and show you a few winter highlights. We're in the wall garden. We've got no end of different hollies, ivies, and I think it's a really nice time of year to look at evergreens uh, and appreciate them side by side. I love it because, you know, if you're thinking you, you've got a bare wall, perhaps facing north, and you think, I'd like some ivy. I mean, here they are, one after the other, and you can choose which variety you like. Yeah. Um, but one has to be careful, don't you, with uh, a variegated ivy, to if it reverts to green and cut it absolutely out. Absolutely right? right. You're absolutely right. You have to keep an eye on them. And, uh, and the green bits are always more vigorous without the variegation. So you've obviously had your eye in before on a variegated uh, I've, I've ivy. I've been troubled by <laughs> it before. <laughs> and uh, you've got lots of hollies here. Yeah. I uh, just think for, for birds, obviously they look very festive, but for birds and for shady borders, reliable structure, and don't you think they have a bit of a timeless elegance to them? I think they look beautiful. And it, I mean, it isn't just a bush. You can train them to do all sorts. Of course, of course. And we've got them clipped and shaped here. And uh, there's just something uh, lovely and wintry and pleasing about a holly with a frost on or a dusting of snow as we've put on for you today. So that's holly and ivy. I've got some very quirky topiary to show you as well. It's a little bit Alice in Wonderland, but it's all lovely and frosted. And I think topiary in the winter is really just gorgeous in the garden. So you can tell me what you think. I'll follow you. <laughs> So topiary, uh, you always see it in lovely magazines, glossy magazines with a bit of snow on or a hoarfrost. Anyway, we've arranged that for you today. They're quite bonkers. What do you think? <laughs> do you know, I think they're funny. I mean, you could have chosen them all to be pyramids or all to be spirals, yeah. but each one's different and it's fun. And for everybody who works here, Gosh, they must be much easier to keep going, only attention once a year or so. Yeah, exactly, an annual clip. And they're so fun because, you know, there's just such characters in their own right to manage and maintain. Oh, I think so. And it, it makes something bold. Yeah. And, you know, you can do it in pairs if you want to, uh, you know, two bold pyramids or spirals or even yeah. animals. And you can have fun doing it. Exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Helmingham Hall, they have a, a topiarised snail by one of the gates to the Royal Garden and it's done so well, it's great. It just brings a smile to everyone's face. It doesn't need to be serious. And of course there is beauty in just standing dead herbaceous plants. I mean, these sedum are obviously completely asleep, but just seeing a frost on them, the way they stand through the winter months, it's still interest to see in the garden. And they look so elegant, don't they? They do. They do. And um, it's a great place to uh, when you come to Wisley to see all the different plant supports. This one is very trendy and <laughs> great, isn't it pretty? They're really good. I mean, they're all for the peonies, which are, of course, completely asleep now, but they sit there through the winter. The plants grow through them again in the spring. And yeah, they're fun, aren't they, to see in the winter border? Well, they're empty now and they look good. Yeah. So on the winter walk, we've actually got some crab apples that tend to hold their fruit for quite a long while into the winter. This is a very small fruited one called Adironat. It's very pretty, isn't it? We almost look like little fairy lights. Uh, yes, absolutely. And then of course there's bark. There's so many nice tree barks to enjoy in the winter. And this is Prunus cerulo and it's one called Amber Scott. What do you it, think to that? It, it's sensational, isn't it? And I love it when you plant in threes, it, even in a smaller garden, three is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It looks the in, part. in the background there, there's a viburnum, one of the deciduous ones called viburnum betulifolium, and that holds its fruit well into midwinter. It's very colourful now. Right, we're going to go to the lake where we'll finish, but there's lots of winter stems all around there and they all reflect. Well, we'll see how they are. It might be quite icy today, but they're all around the lake, so come and have a look. So winter stems as well for winter interest. This is a cornus, sometimes known as dogwood, but this variety is Annie's Winter Orange. 
Have you grown this one? Have you come across this? I haven't, I haven't. I've grown just the ordinary corners with bright red stems yeah, but, right. and then chopped it down and next winter it comes again. Yeah. And so what would you be putting underneath here? Would you have any uh, bulbs or anything? Yeah, so there's crocus under these particular ones, but you could have snowdrops under there, winter aconites, anything to bring that early hit of colour. But you're absolutely right with the hard prune. They need a good hard prune end of March time because it's that one year growth that gives you that really intense colour. And then something a little bit different, these winter stems, these are actually aces here, Acer Nagunda, winter lightning. But we also do it with some of the willows, is this weaving together, almost like a living sculpture. And the team have bound these up with cord, with twine. And uh, well, look at them, what do you think? They're quite striking. It's totally different. I mean, it's very artistic and it, they're intertwined and it looks stunning, doesn't it? So if you've made this sculpture and you've done it at home, do you take it all apart, trim it, and then uh, do it again next year in a exactly. different form? Exactly that, exactly yes, that. Exactly, it does, it does. Mary, thank you so much for joining us for our winter walk. I hope it's shown you some maybe some new things, new ideas for your own garden. I've got lots of ideas for my own garden. And, you know, it's so lovely you come at this time of year and you see something totally different from something in two months time because it'll all be wonderful bulbs. Yeah. But there's so much to see right now. Thank you.